Scientists have just solved one of the biggest mysteries in paleontology, and its answer has the potential to reshape everything we know about the world's most famous dinosaur, Tyrannosaurus rex. It's a surprise twist in the tale of Nanotyrannus, a smaller relative of the T-Rex, which also lived in North America during the Cretaceous. Or did it? Nanotyrannus may have been a smaller dinosaur, but the debate it sparked was Gigantosaurus. Spinosaurus is the most famously controversial dinosaur. Paleontologists can't agree on anything about it, from whether it was aquatic to its favourite colour, but just mentioning Nanotyrannus' existence was enough to turn a dignified scientific conference into a fistfight. Nanotyrannus lancensis was first named in 1988, reclassified from an older fossil that was previously thought to be a Gorgosaurus, but soon division reared its ugly head. There were two camps. One believed fossils attributed to Nanotyrannus were actually just juvenile T-Rex, and that any differences that showed up, like different numbers of teeth, was just what happened to a teenage T-Rex going through puberty. The other believed they belonged to a distinct dino, a smaller mesopredator that would have shared a habitat with the tyrant king. For a while, the pro nanotyrannus party was losing the battle, as scientists developed models that show how this could become this. It was generally believed that there were no small tyrannosaurs in North America in this period, just young T-Rex at different stages in their growth cycle. But now the pendulum has swung the other way. Nanotyrannus is back, and this new research could totally transform our understanding of T-Rex. It's all thanks to an excellent tyrannosaur fossil from the Hell Creek Formation, one that was only recently made available to science because of a battle over the ownership rights, which boiled down to whether fossils could be classified as minerals. Now cradled in the loving arms of the North Carolina Museum, scientists have been able to get a good look at this remarkably complete tyrannosaur fossil, a roughly 18-foot specimen which died alongside and perhaps even locked in combat with a triceratops. And in excavating and examining these bones, they've decided that the dueling dinosaur's tyrannosaur can't possibly be a young T-Rex. It is in fact a distinct species. It is Nanotyrannus. There are three reasons they've come to this conclusion. Firstly, these remarkably well-preserved fossils have highlighted a load of differences between the now-confirmed Nanotyrannus and Tyrannosaurus rex. It has more teeth than T-Rex, a shorter tail, much larger hands, an extra sinus in the quadratodugal bone of the skull, and it's missing the subnarial foramen, a passageway in the nose for blood vessels and nerves to pass through. Plus, while T-Rex had a regular skeleton, Nanotyrannus' bones were entirely made from jelly. Okay, one of those points was made up, but I'm not going to tell you which it was. I've got to keep you on your toes. While a Tyrannosaurus' proportions might change a little over time, you wouldn't expect its arms to actively shrink, and many of the rest of these features are locked in from the start. They can't change as an animal develops. Nanotyrannus naysayers have previously argued that baby T-Rex might lose some teeth over time, but this new research suggests tooth count could differ between individuals, but not in the same individual over its lifespan. The paper's co-author James Napoli did work on crocodilians, the closest toothed reptiles to dinosaurs, which shows that stuff like blood vessels, sinuses and teeth placements don't change in individuals, and are determined incredibly early in embryology, before the bones even form. Because of this, they can be used to identify species, even in hatchlings so small they could fit in your pencil case. So it's impossible for the dueling dinosaur's theropod to be a T-Rex, not unless this dinosaur developed in a very unique way, not shared by any other tyrannosaurs or any living reptile today. Secondly, the paper reasons that the new fossil lacks similarities with Tyrannosaurus rex, which, yeah, okay, that sounds like the same thing. But the point is here that there are no unique traits shared between Nanotyrannus and adult T-Rex, which would point to them being the same species. So it's not just that they have many differences, it's also that the similarities they do have are also shared by other Tyrannosaurs. And some of these similarities have been overstated. For instance, Nanotyrannus and T-Rex both have unusually wide skulls, but that fact becomes much less convincing when you look at them side by side. Then you see that while Nanotyrannus has a thick skull, it's much longer than it is wide, whereas T-Rex's head is just an absolute unit. Finally, and this one really clinches it, the evidence shows this Nanotyrannus fossil is definitely an adult. The North Carolina fossil is the first of these disputed dinosaurs to exhibit what's called an external fundamental system. When you take a thin cross-section of bone, the external fundamental system is a point where you see the growth lines become very close together. This shows the animal's growth slowing to a halt as it approaches its maximum body size, a maximum body size in this case much smaller than a T-Rex's. They've confirmed Nanotyrannus lancensis, a long-lost species that have been argued about for the past 25 years. But the scientists in this study didn't stop there. They also went and looked at Jane, the previous small tyrannosaur at the centre of the Nanotyrannus debate. 
and they decided that Jane is different from both the new dueling dinosaur fossil and Tyrannosaurus rex. It's a little larger than the new fossil, despite being younger and not yet fully grown. It has this funky little prong at the back of the tail, and one of the holes in its skull is a different shape. So they realise that Jane is part of the Nanotyrannus genus, but actually a new species. They've named it Nanotyrannus Lithaeus, after the river Leith. This is a river that flows through the underworld in Greek mythology. I forget exactly what it does, but anyway, it's a cute reference to the fact that this dinosaur will need to lose a lot of emotional baggage after being argued about and pulled apart for so many years. As part of the study, the researchers also constructed new phylogenetic trees to try and determine where Nanotyrannus fits in in Tyrannosaur evolution, and these suggest it diverged very early on. Possibly it was a closer relative to the Tyrannosaurs of eastern North America, an area with a very crap fossil record, one that migrated west as the seas that split the continent retreated, to appear in the much better fossil record of Western North America. So this is quite exciting, but what does it all actually mean? Well, it would certainly be frustrating news for anyone who had recently made a video about the dueling dinosaurs fossil and what it means for Tyrannosaurs rex and Triceratops encounters. But more importantly, it means a lot of research that was done with the understanding that fossils like Jane were young T-Rex needs to be reassessed. <laughs> we need to re-examine studies done in the past two decades which cover how T-Rex grew, how they moved, what they ate, and just generally how they lived. For instance, this revelation puts an end to the very popular niche partitioning theory, which suggested there were no medium-sized carnivores in the late Cretaceous because T-Rex occupied all the available carnivore niches at different stages in its life cycle. It also means paleontologists are going to need to go back and look at other baby T-Rex fossils to make sure they're not also Nanotyrannus in hiding, or perhaps even other undiscovered species of Tyrannosaur. More studies are going to follow this one, and we're going to learn a lot of new things unlearn a lot of old things, and perhaps even see some new dinosaurs classified in the future. Exciting times. Objection! Or perhaps we'll see a surprise rebuttal in the months and years to come, and this will turn out to be not a decisive conclusion after all, but just the latest salvo in the Nanotyrannus War.